Okay. Okay, let's see. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is the Bini Empire Advancement League, uh, the home of all the Benins worldwide. Uh, with me today is our Vice President, uh, Mr. Ju Samutiame Maui Orukbe, and uh, I'm by name Dele Pelo. I'm the President of the organization, and he's the Vice President of this organization. Uh, in our last broadcast, we were talking about uh, religion and the spirituality. Uh, we got some feedback from our viewers, some questions, and uh, some were positive, and uh, some were also in a negative form. And today, the question we feel we want to ask, uh, we we'll answer it today. And uh, the vice president of this organization, Mr. Joe Urukbe, will be answering some of these questions, and uh, we will also analyze some issues that surround religion and the uh, spirituality. So you are welcome, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everybody. Um, good morning, our members out there, listeners and all that. Um, I want to thank you this morning for um, you know, being a part of what we're doing here. And for those of you who are going to watch our program, maybe sometime later, I want to also encourage you to reach out to us with your questions and um, be a part of what we are doing. If you've been in, be a part of what we are doing. Our membership is open to everybody, um, you know, irrespective of uh, status, irrespective of your ethnic um, group. That's right. You need a descendant of the Great Benin Empire. You are a member of this organization. So, um, Mr. President, yeah. Yeah, thank you. And uh, to not to waste time, uh, the first question was uh, what is religion? from your organizational perspective? Uh, well, uh, there are a lot of um, definitions, um, you know, for religion, you know, some are academic and some are, you know, different, there are different perspective to it. But what I, I, I just want to do, maybe what I'll do this morning is to give uh, a bread and um, um, a tomato seller, <laughs> kind of definition you know, to religion. You know, so, um, well, people have asked what is religion. Um, I'm just gonna do a layman's um, in definition of what religion is. Religion is uh, man's desire to define who God is from man's cultural, social worldview. That is basically what religion is. You know, the belief in a deity, a superior being, you know, and um, once, how do I put this now? Once um, quest to define who that deity is, or, or who that supreme being is. That is basically what religion is. So every religion is a byproduct of one man's thoughts of who he thinks God is. You understand? It's, um, uh, it's as a, every religion is as a result of one man's thinking of who a spirit being is, a superior being, his belief in a superior being and his thinking of what or who that superior being is, you know. For instance, Judaism is a byproduct of the thinking of Jews. Yes. Who they think God is, how they think God operates. Now, those thinking is as a result of their belief system. For instance, when a Jew goes into battle, 
and he wins the war. He believes God has handed victory over to him. Exactly. So, and, and, and it is based on that, that they write some of their literatures. When a Jew goes to battle and he loses a war, he come back and believe that God is upset with them. <laughs> yes. Sit down in their literature and it goes on like that. Christianity has its own. Now, in, 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 in Christianity, the Christians, academically, every when you say academically, the definition of religion is belief in a superior being. Yeah. Now, the Christians' argument is that Christianity is not a religion, but Christianity is a way of life. No. Religion is a way of life. Life, yes. Because religion itself is defined by the things you believe in. And the things you believe in is who you are. The things you believe in is the way you live your life. The things you believe in is the way you talk. The things you believe in is, is what propels your thinking in a certain direction. So for instance, the Christians believe in the Supreme Being. The Christians believe that the Supreme Being is all powerful. The Christians believe that the Supreme Being sent his son to come and die for the world and set out rules. Now, one thing about Christianity is it depends now on where you stand. The Catholics believe in the same logic from a different point of view. The Anglican believes in the same logic from a different point of view. So is the celestial and, and all the school people, you understand. Now, in Islam, Islam also um, propagates the idea of one God, quite different from, from Christianity, because Christianity says there's one God, but it is three in one. So you have the God, the Son, the Father, and the Holy Spirit, even though, you know, that's debatable. Now, um, Islam believes in one God. So the Muslim man will tell you that there is no other God except Allah. You understand? Yes. And that Muhammad is his messenger. Yes. Now, even though the Muslims believe that Jesus, the one they call Isa, is greater in terms of birth and rest and um, um, birth and um, how do I put it now? Calling than yeah. Muhammad. They don't fall, they, they, they still elevate Muhammad more than Jesus. Yes. Even though they accept that Jesus, Isa, you know, has a higher calling, you know, and his birth, his miraculous birth and all that, you know, than, than Muhammad. But still, you know, they take Muhammad as the major messenger that they put forward, you know, to, to propagate their idea of Islam. Islam, yes. But they also believe in the supreme being. You know, now the, the the understanding of an Arab of uh, understanding of God from an Arab man's view is based on his culture and his tradition. The understanding of God from the Jews' man's uh, perspective is based on his culture and his tradition, and the same is with the Greco-Romans, you know, and and the the early Hebrews who from the, uh, the Christian movement, you know, everything was at the byproduct of um, their, their religion, their understanding of their religion and their culture. Now, when you come to Africa, it's a whole different ballgame entirely. The Africans believe in the Supreme Being. So an Esa man, his name is Osanobwa. So a Yoruba man, his name is, is he's called Eledumare. So an evil man, he's called Chuku. Yeah. You know? Now, even within the Benin, the Esa, and, and descendants of the Benin Empire, people called God based on their understanding yes. of who he is. So they attribute certain things to God. So some call him the maker of heaven and earth. Some would call him the giver of life. Some would call him the beginning and the end. Yes. So these are attributes, you know, 
Now, the definition of who God is, is based on the Benin man or the African man's understanding from his cultural and traditional worldview. And I think when we do not try to bombard ourselves with too much heavy, heavy definitions, we would understand all those things. Now, the fact that we believe this is who God is from our traditional and cultural view does not mean that that is who God is. It just means that that is our, our own understanding of who God is. For instance, a lot of people out there, when they hear Nigeria, the first thing they will say is, Nigeria is a corrupt country. Yeah. That is their understanding of what, you know, maybe their society has influenced them to think that way of Nigerians. Yes. It doesn't mean that Nigeria is the most corrupt country in the world. No, no, no. But that's people's perception, people's understanding, people's, you know, people grow up to believe that that's how Nigeria is. But it doesn't mean that that's how Nigeria is, you know. Now, everybody have um, a definition of what the term God is. Everybody has a different uh, a definition of what the term God is. Even within our religious um, sects, we all have a definition of what God is. Exactly. To some, God is a protector. So God is a tool of defense. In Christianity, what is God? People use anointing oil. It represents God. <laughs> it represents God. People use money, tithing. If I give tithes, I would receive. It represents God. That is why I use the term. I'm not saying who is God. I say what is God to so people. If you come to the African um, environment, people do a lot of sacrifices. Yes. They have the food bowl, pepper, all these things. Some people use all sort of charms. Some people use uh, things for protection and all that. That is their definition of what they think God is, not who he is. So when you say God is my protector, for instance, but you now say, okay, God is my protector, then you use things, charms for protection. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So you have now um, made God a tool to be used. Yes. Because everything you, you are doing, thinking that it is God that has enabled it, you understand? What, it, what, you, what you do at that point is to make God a tool. You understand? And that is, all these things are as a result of our understanding of religion and religion serving as an answer to a question of who and what we think God is. So that's the best way I can, um, one of the, I mean, I could define religion, you know, to the layman's, uh, so that the layman can really have an understanding of what religion is. Yeah, thank, thank you, sir, for the explanation. It was very, very interesting. Uh, the second question uh, is people uh, confuse religion with uh, spirituality. And uh, there's a question from a viewer here. What is the difference between the Bini religion and the spirituality. Okay, yes. Um, the Bini religion is just like every other religion as I stated earlier. Man's, ability, uh, man's quest to give an answer to man's own question okay. on who God is or what God is. You know, that's basically what religion is. Now, when it comes to spirituality, Spirituality simply is getting to a level of enlightenment. You understand? A level of enlightenment. A level where uh, goes, it, it goes beyond religion. 
That level of enlightenment can only come when you have an experience, yes. a personal experience with God. Unlike religion, religion is a man's experience that is adopted by people. Everything you see about the Bible is uh, the black Jews experience yes. documented. Then uh, the new generation Jews documented, the Greco-Romans documented, then the so-called apostles of Christ, their experience documented. So each and every one of them have a different opinion of who and what they think God is, that's religion. In the African setting too, it's the same thing. Yeah. The, 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 the Benins, the Yorubas, everybody, the Igbos have, you know, some sort of perception of who they think and what they think God is. But when it comes to spirituality, it is quite different, you know, because your opinion of who God is, is based on your personal experience with God. You understand? And, and it, it, it goes beyond religion. Oh, yeah. You need to get to a state of serious consciousness. And that state is born out of your personal experience with the divine. It's totally different from religion. Exactly. And it's a byproduct of people's experiences that you have adopted. And it is not evidence-based. Yes. That experience is not evidence-based. Most of the things attributed to religion or to God, true religion, aren't evidence-based. Some of it are mythology that has been fused with history. So for instance, um, you could come up with a lot of things, you know, and say, this is how God did this. In another climb, this another set of people will come up with a different thing and say, this is how God did it. You understand? Now, everybody will now base their belief on those events. But spirituality to, to man is based on man's own experience with the divine. And you can get attained to that level based on your consciousness, your level of consciousness, you know, how you open up to energy, you know, and all that. You cannot take my own personal experience with God. To me, that is how God is. Yeah. My ex personal experience with God is based on my own relationship, you know, my own, and my own relationship with God is based on my level of consciousness, you know, that's the difference. And in ancient Benin, we had the religious folks and we had the spiritual folks. We had the religious folks who believed in God from the eyes of uh, leaders who established several sects. Yes. We have the Ogun sects. We have the Ishongo sect, we have the local sect. Now, all these people believe in God, but they believe in God from the experience or the eyes yes. pattern that established those sects. Now, that is totally different from the spiritualist who does not need the Ishongo to tell him about who God is, who does not need the Oloku to tell him about God. Okay, yes. don't need all these various sects for him to have a knowledge of God. He has a knowledge of God because he is his consciousness is great. His connection with God is direct. You know, there is that uh, proximity, propinquity between him and God. So he is on experience up to now. His understanding of who God is a personal. And it is personal because he developed a relationship with God based on certain level, based on his level of consciousness. You know, that is the difference between 
the Benin spirituality and the Benin religion. So you find out that the spiritualist, a Benin man who is a spiritualist, prays to God directly. Yes. He does not believe in a mediator. The Christians believe in a mediator, Christ. The Christian, the new generation Christian believes in the mediator, their pastor. Yes. Even though they were supposed to focus on Christ, they have replaced Christ with their pastor. The Muslims believe in a mediator. They pray through Muhammad. Muhammad, yeah. Okay. Uh, it's like we lost the uh, contact with our uh, vice president. Yes, uh, what I can pick out from all these uh, uh, broadcasts of um, his uh, answer, uh, spirituality is evidence based on your own experience, what you experience, where religion is just a documentary from other people, from other people uh, who feel this is uh, how it's supposed to be, and that uh, this is how it was, you know. In in the Benin Empire, or let me put it in the Edo part of it, we have the session like the idiom, like the idiom and uh, some others uh, set of, like the Omonoba is the head of the whole spirituality and the, and the religion of the Benins. You know. We have an author or Atta, where the Benis uh, pray to their God direct, and also to their forefathers who paved the way for them to be whom they are today. We have the Oguidians, or we have the altar in the house, we the first son is the chief priest of this order. And any message that is going to be sent to the forefather or to God, these people will go to this order or Atta and from there pray direct to God and to their forefathers. Also in the palace, the palace has the altar or the Atta that is that's the Bini, where we pray to God direct. Then we have the community uh, also Atta or Atta, where the community pray also direct to their to their forefathers and to their God directly. That's the Oguidion. In some communities, you also have the Oguidion Orowa, Oguidion Ore, Ugo. And there, there are some other deities. Okay, you are welcome back, sir. So, sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, we. The, Okay, continue, sir, where you stop so that. So, um, um, basically, that's just um, what it is, you know, in terms of the difference between um, Bini religion, and, um, uh, the spiritual, spiritual, uh, Bini spirituality, you know. So, any other question? Yeah, there are still about three questions which are very, very important uh, okay. to, to answer. The, is Christianity and Islam a religion? This is... If Christianity and Islam is a religion, no matter how people try to say no, like Christians say no, Christianity is not a religion, it's a way of life. 
Yeah. It, it, it's their religion. It's it's just what it is, you know. Okay. Yeah. And uh, this there's also a question which is not about uh, religion. Uh, did the Benin's kingdom uh, encourage slavery? Slavery. There was never a time the Benin kingdom encouraged slavery. Um, did the Benin man have, have slaves? Yes. Yes. Um, you are allowed to have slaves. Yes. But were you allowed to abuse your slaves? No. No. Never. You know. You um, did the slaves have um. Uh, some sort of um, freedom, yes. Yes. In history, we we have we have um, evidences abound in our history of slaves who um, you know somewhat became very important people in the kingdom. Yes. Workers, merchants, and all that. You know, the the Benin man's um, understanding of slavery is totally different from the Europeans' um, um, understanding of slavery. Yeah. The, the Benin man did not force anybody, you know, when and, and slavery in, in, in the in the Benin era came as a result of conquest. Yes. So when when the Great Benin Empire, you know, went into battle with other little kingdoms or whatever, and they conquer, you know, um, they take captives. But now guess what? They do not force impose you. No. They don't impose their culture and their tradition on you. They do not change your name. They do not change your language. It never, it never happened. If the Bini kingdom had imposed its culture and tradition and its spirituality or its religion on kingdoms that they had conquered, yeah. Bini kingdom would probably be one of the biggest the Benish would actually be one of the biggest tribe today. In the world, yes. Probably competing with the Hausa tribe. Yes. You know, but the Benish did not ship slaves. They did not move slaves like the Europeans did, shackle them and put them in boats and no. Their understanding of slavery was totally different. Yes. They're more of a servant. Exactly. So you help in the farm. Most of most of the people we were taking at that time, you you, you were taking as uh, farm servants, um, workers, you know, in cuts, maybe for influential people, and all that. But with a sense of dignity, they were treated as human beings. Yes, that's the difference between the slave era, this the slave uh, experience in the Benin Kingdom, and the slave era, you know. The, um, European slave era. That's the difference. As a Benin man slave, you had your name, you had your identity. It was never taken away from you. So we had a lot of people from even present day Ife who were slaves. Present day Oyo who were slaves. Yes. You know, present day Kogi, Benue, stretched into South Cameroon who were slaves. Yes. But practiced their own religion kept their name, kept their tradition, kept their customs, worked as human beings. Yes. As human beings. Even fought alongside the kingdom. Exactly. In battle. Some of them later became very great merchants in agriculture, in stone works, in, in metal works. In, in customs and tradition and stuff like that. A lot of them became great because the Benin Empire at that time gave everybody the opportunity to aspire. Whether you are a slave owner, whether you are a slave, because the concept of a Benin man is that every man is a free born. Oh, yes. So even, if, even though you are a slave, you had a slave owner, all your children who were born we're not seen categorized as slaves. No, never. They had the opportunity to aspire, to live their own life. And most times, it will shock a lot of people that some of these slaves were even allowed to go back to their villages, their own yes. communities where they were taken to visit their people and willingly come back. Okay. Some of them were even allowed 
to buy their freedom. Yes. Some of them served and became great people in the house of their masters because the tradition and the culture of the Bini man forbids the Bini man from treating humans as animals. Yes. The tradition and the culture of the Bini man is such that the Bini man must accommodate a stranger irrespective of his social status. The culture and tradition of a Bini man is such that a Bini man must accord every respect to human, whether you are a man, whether you are a woman. And it is based on that understanding, that consciousness, that even when a Bini man procures a slave, he treats them with dignity. Yes. And that is why today we, we hear a lot of things from people. We see, we hear articles, things that people have written that seem to you know, portray the Bini kingdom as a, a powerless empire. <laughs> you know? And it goes on today. Because even if you go to Bini city today, you find out that the people are so accommodating. Exactly. Unlike kingdoms in, in, in Southwest, we use very derogatory terms who want to change people's identity. Yes. Who, you know, when it comes to politics, they will tell you that you are a foreigner. In, in, in the Bini Kingdom, once you come, you live peace, peacefully, you, come, you, you contribute to the development of that society. The Bini man is you as a Bini man. He doesn't care whether your name is Olamide, or whether yeah. your name is Echiku, or whether your name is Sulaiman or Salisu. Whether you come from Bronu, or you come from uh, uh, Egba, or you come from uh, uh, Umunede. As far as they are concerned, it's not, it's not relevant. What is relevant is since you have come into our domain, what have you done? How have you contributed to the success, to the glory of the big empire? That is what has been the building man's own concern. And so we have too many uh, revisionists today who want to use that. You know, they see it as a weakness and they've always used it to taunt the Bini kingdom. If you are so great, why are people not speaking your language? The Bini man is interested in you speaking his language in the first instance. If you are so great, why, why are people not um, 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 you know, living with your cultures and tradition? The Bini man does not change people's culture and tradition. Yes. He doesn't have to change. And that is why we do not forcefully, force order, uh, forcefully make people um, um, accept us. Like the, the, the Ife, the Oni of Ife and the Yorubas are doing trying to force the guys to be Yorubas by all means. <laughs> in the attitude of a Bini man, because we've had people say about this is the history. Why are we allowing the Yorubas to do this? We are not interested in you being us. Yes. If you believe that you are a descendant of the Bini empire, it's left to you. We do not want to force people because whether you like it or not, we know who you are. Yes. So we do not want, even need to force you. If you go to Jamaica today, a lot of Jamaicans are descendants of the Great Bini Empire. Yes. But because the Binis are not assertive, they are not those who go about with history and culture and impose it on people. A lot of Jamaicans do not even know where they are from. Exactly. So everybody claims that we are from a certain place because that's the only history available to them. If you look at the palace today, it is still the same posture that the palace has. Yes. The palace will not engage in any arguments. You believe you are greater, good luck to you. Like I was telling um, my ever, some of my ever brothers, I showed them a picture of an Esa man dressed. And we put it side by side with an Ever man dressed. 
And they looked at it. And they said, ah, it's the same thing. Yes. I said, okay. Now, take the Yoruba man's dress in front of it. And put it side by side with an with ever. <laughs> and they looked at it. And they said, no, it's different. I said, okay. So you see that even in our dressing, we are the same. Yes. Now, going to the language. Va in every language is come. Yes. Va in Esa language is come. Oh, yes. There are too many similarities in the Anglo's culture to today. The Anglo culture is the same as the Esa culture. Exactly, yes. But you see, the thing is, the Biniman does not go out there to talk about his history. He does not go out there to talk about his culture and his tradition. That is why a lot of things is a lot of things are working against the Benima when it comes yes. to the discussion of um, uh, the, the ancestry of the Gans and the Eves. Everything seems to work against the Benima because the Benima is um, someone that really cares less. Now that's the weakness, but it's also their strength. Yes. Oops. You know? And so in the beginning, in the those era, uh, for instance, Bene Republic, formerly Dahome, when General Isi Dahome went, you know, and took over the, the land, they didn't force the people no. to be in names. They didn't force the people to uh, adopt the Bini custom and tradition, no. The Binis settled there, intermarried with their host community there. The Yoruba merchants came. The Bini man did not stop the Yoruba merchant from doing his business. No. <laughs> the, the Hausa and the Fulani merchants came. The Bini man did not stop the Hausa and Fulani merchants from doing his business. Yes. And that is why today you can see that in all the parts that the Bini man treaded in ancient times, the footprints are there. Yes. And the Bini man never for once changed the people's identity. Because to the Bini man, he sees that as a sign of weakness to conquer people and impose on them your culture, your tradition, your language. The Bini man sees that as a sign of weakness. And that is why you notice anywhere the Bini man goes, he respects the culture and tradition of his host community. Yes. He sometimes embraces his host community's culture and tradition. That is the difference. He does not go and impose himself on yeah. his host community. That is why the Bini man can live peacefully with his host. He does not go hunting his host, even if he is richer, culturally, economically. He will not go hunting mm. his host. You know, and that's the same reason, uh, that's one of the things I keep telling people. There are a lot of Bini sons and daughters who are billionaires today, but they don't make noise. The reason why they don't make noise is it's not part of them. No. The way we are trained, we are trained in such a way that in anything we do, we always are we are always conscious of doing it as a dignified human being. Exactly. And that's why you do you would hardly see a billion man throwing money around. You would hardly see a billion man creating confusion, talking. In short, we have we, we had a politician. You know, who used to be the national chairman of um, the ruling party, APC. APC, yes. And he did a lot of things that the Benin felt, no, this is unlike Benin. And we dealt with the issue. But before him, we had another Benin man who was the same chairman of the APC. Yes. And people saw him as weak. 
because he chose not to bully people. When, when you know, when APT had crisis, he would call the executive and the legislature, come, let us discuss. And all other people saw him as weak. And so they, they manipulated and he stepped down. <laughs> Brought in another Benin man that everybody thought was strong and whatever. And we saw all what happened. Yes. How those people, how he cut people's political career down, how he bullied people. And it, it had to be the Benin man that would solve the equation, the problem at that time. Yes. And so we had to come back and say, no, this is not us. This man is not a representation of who a Benin man wow. is. And even though a lot of people did not like the governor at that time, a lot of people said, no, we needed to put the stop to what this our Benin father or brother or who is doing. And we put a stop to it. He, he, he stepped down as a chairman of the APT. And today, he's nowhere to be found when it comes to national politics. Because we are agitated at anything that is inappropriate. Yes. Every Benin man is agitated at anything that is inappropriate. That is our training. And that is why when a lot of things are going on today in, in, in Benin, in our kingdom, we begin to wonder, where did all this come from? How did our sons become what stars? Our daughters yeah. become how? how? Because it's alien, you know? And, and like, I, I also want to say this, on the issue of religion, with due respect to my ancestor, uh, Oba Isigi, because I, I think he Isigi, was- yes. I think he was one who brought Christianity. Yes. And, and I think <laughs> bringing Christianity to the Benin kingdom was part of what caused our downfall. Exactly. I can say that, and you know, with due respect to my ancestor, he was um, even even when he brought Christianity, he still did not force it on the people. No, he just added it to one of the several religious sects. You know, but for me, I think that was one of our grave mistakes. You know, until today, we are still bearing the consequences of such decisions. Even higher, you know. The, con the consequence uh, is, is in the next 50 years, it's going to be very, very difficult for the Bini culture to raise yeah. up his hand and yeah. say, I'm, I'm a Bini culture, you know? yeah. because even the, the Christians now, they are, they are now uh, Christianizing the Bini culture yes. in ways you know, that it's not supposed to be. Mm -hmm. uh, when we talk, let me just uh, talk about the Everest, the Gaz and the and the form people of Ghana. Uh, yeah. But the Uni of Ife uh, or the Yorubas, they forgot that the Oba Oroboa yeah. uh, went from Bini to the present day Ghana. Yeah. So where did the Yoruba went to? Where do they conquer or where do they establish their kingdoms yeah. in those areas? Because these people, they are not just people who migrated. There are also some, some of them who follow our orbas to that present day Ghana. You know? yes. So they should remember this when they are talking about uh, they are Yorubas, they are from Ife, they are from. Because if even the Benis at that time have a great influence on the Ife people. Yes. Even in their monarchic, um, yes. how do they call it? In their king system. You know? Yes. Because uh, it, it's still the same thing we talk about culture and tradition. Yes. When, when the influence of the Bini kingdom stretched to present day Ife and Oyo and uh, Lagos and all that, yes. we saw people who saw the royalty in the Bini culture and tradition and identified with that royalty. Yes. We saw those who saw um, an attraction in the uh, religious practices of the Biniman, and they adopted it. Exactly. Some of them became worshippers of Oku, some of them became worshippers of Ishongu and, and the rest of them. You know, and so when the, the, the British Empire came and the conquest, and, you know, and all that, yes. you know, 
the British gave the Eurobas the opportunity, you know, to help them rewrite a lot of history. Yes. And I tell you for a fact, that is why the Eurobas today have been punished. Because when a Yoruba man wants to become anything, he needs to depend on the British yes. or, the, or the Fulani oligarchy. He cannot become anything of his own volition. Yes, it's, it's very difficult for them. You understand? And that is what they don't even understand. They see it as a political sadness. Yes. Political sadness. You know, it's, it's just you being dependent. Yes. So politically, the Euro, the Yoruba nation is not independent. No, not at all. It is it's not independent. Unlike the Bini man who commands respect. Because historically, till today, the North, the Hauta, the Fulanis, accord respect to the Bini yes. man. Yes. Would accord to Yoruba man. Historically, the British accord respect to the Bini man than they would accord to the Sri because they realized that based on history, we have we have, we've dealt with these two groups. Yes. And we have known that based on history, the leaders of this group, the Binis, were more honorable. Exactly. Uh, they, you know, in short, that was where the term Yoruba actually came from. Yarubawa, cunning people. And, you know, it was corrupted to Yoruba. Yes. You know, and I always ask my, my, my Yoruba friends, what is the meaning of the word Yoruba? <laughs> I can never give you an answer. They can't find it. Because it's not... It's it's and it's something that was um you know how do I put it bestowed on them by another set of people you know the Bini man remains a Bini man his identity never changed likewise the Hausa man you know immense and Hausa man even though they are being uh, subdued by the Fulanis. They still hold on to what makes them Hausa. Yes. You know, and you notice that an Hausa man and a Bini man face almost the same hurdles. Yes. Because when the British came, they found an Hausa man to be a man of honor. Same with the Bini man. In short, without the, 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 the Emirs, it would have been too difficult for the British to have been able to colonize the North. Yes. Without the destruction of the Bini Empire, it would have been extremely difficult for the British to colonize Southern Nigeria. Exactly. Historically, the facts are there. And so the British man sees a Bini man as a potential enemy. Yes. Even to date. And, or as a potential target for all these distortions, sorry. And that is why everything about the Bini Empire that is hidden in their museums, every information about it is being suppressed. That is why they will, they fail to, they refuse to release the artifact. Yes. Because they know if they release the artifact, it will create an avenue for further discussion. On who the real the Bini man really is. And because the Ifes who are claiming some heads from the Bini artifacts. Yes. <laughs> Sorry to I'm laughing. Know the greatness of the Bini story. They want to attribute these things, they want to claim these things to attach it to their history. Because historically, there is nothing, nothing so great that could be held on to in terms of they trying to portray themselves yes. as a devil kingdom. 
To us, Benin, the greatest kingdom that ever existed from the Yoruba nation remains the Oyo Empire and the Oyo Kingdom. Yes. Because that is the greatest kingdom that the Benin had interaction with. Yes. Had um, 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 several business dealings with. In short, during the Fulani invasion at the time, the Bini had to step in. Yes. To the Oyo Empire, uh, the Oyo Kingdom. Every other, whatever, we are small, small kingdoms. And so there was nothing really, but you also notice that there has been a calculated attempt to sideline or to suppress the history of the Oyo Kingdom. Yes. Every time the people want to talk about Yorubas, they talk about the Ifes yes. and the Oyo. Meanwhile, if I never had a kingdom, <laughs> we are where did they exist? <laughs> they never had. It was the Oyos, militarily, economically, they were the greatest. Yes, of all Yorubas. But there has been a calculated attempt for political and socio-cultural gains of some certain um, um, elements. Honest people to relegate the history of the Oyoman, you know, to suppress their history. And that is the same thing they are doing to the Benin Kingdom. Yes, and, and we, we, the new generation, we know this already. And the, the British, they are very, very afraid of the Benins to say the fact, because they know when the Benin wake up today, and said, we want to reclaim everything that belongs to us. They know that Nigeria will not be existing again. Because most of these truths is hidden in their museums. If yes. you go to Switzerland, anywhere you go in the world, even though it's Canada, in Australia, you see all these things. Yes. Even some of these things we are corrupted to Yoruba, uh, uh, artifacts yeah. of which they were made in Benin, like the, the head. Yeah. The old knee of his face parading here, here and there. Yeah. It's made in Benin, in Nigun. Yeah. This was influence the Benins were having on the Oyos. Yeah. And the Ife people. Yeah. So so when the when these people just come out today and say uh this belongs to us. Show us the evidence that really belongs to you. Show us where these things are being made. Or you know the, being made. The, the funniest thing is that the British has an inventory of everything that was looted in Benin. Yes. They have, uh, they know where it was looted from, which museum is holding what, yes. which fact is holding what. They know. Yes, because this all these things we share among the the, yeah. the powers. But because this thievery, this quest to, to, to steal the identity of the Bini by selling individuals in the Yoruba nation benefits the British man. Exactly. He would not say a word. He rather would see us fighting amongst ourselves over artifacts. Yes. Gains <laughs> from, from, from that fight. And that is why we as Benins must begin to find new ways of uh, establishing the truth. Yes. So that people would actually know the truth. So irrespective of what any other person thinks, the truth will always remain the truth. But we have to begin to speak this truth. Yes. And the only way we can begin to speak this truth is when we begin to retrace our steps, self steps back to our culture, our neglected culture and tradition and our spirituality. Exactly. Not our spirituality. Because you see, and it's one thing I want to correct. This organization has Christians, yes. Muslims, atheists, traditionalists, 
in this our organization, we have them there. And we do not tell anybody not to believe in whatever you want to believe in. No. You have the right to believe in Jesus. You have the right to believe in Muhammad. Nobody saying you should not believe. There's never, you could ask most of our members. Nobody has ever said, uh, because you are a Christian, you can't be a man of the show. No, no, no. Body, because that is the spirit of our forefathers. Exactly. Instead being, we had various clans. We had various religious sects. In ancient Benin, during the time of Obaisige, we had Christians. Yes. We had Muslims. We had Ogun worshippers. There was never a time in the history of Benin that we had any religious war or there was yeah. any uh, discrimination. And that is why it is the same spirit we carry today in our organization. We are Christians, Muslims, traditional worshippers, whatever, can sit down and talk about the progress of the Benin man. So we also, I also want to state this year. Thank you. I don't to any religious sect. I don't belong to any religious sect. I My believe question. in I do not believe I need to speak to God through any mediator. I believe I speak to God directly and he listens to me. I read the Bible, I read the Quran, I take out the useful things there and I apply it to my life. And the things that I think are not useful, I discard them. Just like I read books written by very great writers. Today, I take what I think is useful, I apply it, and things that I think are not useful, I discard them. That's just how it is. So I need people to also know that these things we discuss, we are not discussing it with the aim of, you know, lifting one religion above the other. As far as we are concerned, we know that religion is man-made. Yes. It is man quest for truth or man uh, uh, search to define who God is. You understand? So, and those religions are limited. But what we always want to do is we want to encourage people to, you know, have this, provoke you to want to um, have a personal relationship with God, not based on any indoctrination, exactly. but based on your own experiences, you know, because the way God will deal with me is the way God will deal with you, sir. It's totally different. Exactly. So our organization is open to everybody, irrespective of your religious belief, as long as you are a beginning man. So thank, thank you very much, sir. Uh, I just want to let our viewer know uh, in the future, we are also going to be talking about, about uh, extra topic about the slavery. Yes. in the Benin Empire compared to the British or the world power slavery. Yes. And because these are two different things. Yeah. Because I've seen so many documentation about Africa, especially the one I watched of recent about Ghana. When the Ghana person was talking about slavery, that Africans were having slavery and this and that. And that the Arab also came. They were the, the first set of people that came. You know? Yeah, there's a very, very huge uh, difference between that. And also about religion. If you want to know more about religion, just go back to the European history. When the, Euro when the Europe started as European, then you will understand the influence, the rich people, and, at that period, we have it on religion. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, if you go there, then you will understand what religion is. Yes. What make up religion. Yes. And the difference between religion and spirituality we are yes. talking about. Yeah. Because, you know, in Europe, they, they kept their history very, very strong. You know, yeah. it's not like ours where the Yorubama will come out and start uh, distorting the history of the Benins, or the Igbos will come out and start distorting the history of Benins or the Hausa. So, the the Europeans, this is what made them uh, 
learned faster than us because they kept their history, rewrite it as it is, even though it's against their will, you know, when it comes to their own history. It's only when they come to about other people they are trying to colonize, then we start changing everything. Because you can see a lot of documentary how the religion was invented, why the religion was invented. So thank you, our viewers. Is there anything you want to add, uh, Honorable Vice President? I just want to encourage us to, uh, you know, go to our YouTube page, the Guinea Empire Advancement League, and yes. subscribe. Keep your notification button on so that once um, new materials come in, you'll be notified. You know, um, help us share our videos. Yes. Somebody out there will need to um, hear some of the things we are saying. And if you have a different opinion, a different view, I mean, express yourself, you know. Yes. It's just a beginning man to always listen. So we listen to people, we listen to, you know, people's opinions, their views, the philosophy, science, and culture, tradition, all these things. We are always open to listening to people. Yes. Any uh, contrary op opinion, please express yourself. You know, we your your views are welcome. Yeah. So and derogatory or demeaning, you know, anything that would uh, promote the cause of the black man, we, we are always welcome to have discussions with you. Thank you very much, everybody, for being a part of what we're doing today. And I say, may our God and ancestor bless us all. Mr. President, thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you very much. Just as our, uh, as our Vice President said, we would like to welcome all the Benins to this organization. No matter the religion you, you have, whether you are Muslim, Christian, traditionalist, or you are Olokun Sava or, or Olokun worshiper, you are welcome because we all are human beings. As a black person, we are also related in some ways. We have similar and no similar things that put us together. Yeah. So <clears throat> and our YouTube page is there, very, very interesting. We have a lot of video there. Please subscribe and also help us to share our, our videos, our comments and others. So, and we thank you those of you that has been supporting us, especially our members, our executives and all that, all out there, thank you for supporting us and uh, we really appreciate. So we want to call it a day. I say goodbye for now. I will be coming back very soon, but we cannot promise when, but I hope we come out again on Sunday to see what we can do again. Okay. Thank you, sir. Have a great day, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye.